Now, there are very few scientists or people of any sort whose pictures hang in my office. But I have a picture of Yuri hanging up, looking at me, to remind me all the time of the scientific standards that I try and maintain. Today's quite a sad day for me because I've just received a copy of a Russian scientific journal which contains the obituary of one of my close friends and collaborators, Professor Yuri Gobatin. He was an excellent scientist who has been a great friend of me and my students here in Nottingham. But let me explain to you what he did. He was born in Chechnya before the war, the Second World War, and then moved to Moscow. He used to tell me about how he had gone to Red Square in Moscow the day that Stalin died in 1953. And then for the last 40 years, he's worked in an institute in a town called Chernogolovka, quite near Moscow, the Institute of Miner Mineralogy that's making minerals. And because he was interested in how minerals were formed, he was very interested in the properties of high temperature water. Yuri was the sort of scientist who's called a spectroscopist. He studied the absorption of light by substances. And particularly, he studied the absorption of infrared light by water. And the idea of his experiments was to try and understand how the nature of water changes when it's under very high temperature and pressure, such as you find deep underground where minerals are being formed. And it's really hard to do experiments at high temperature and pressure. And Yuri was probably the leading scientist in the world for studying water under these conditions. Let me explain to you the problem. The problem is that if you're studying the absorption of infrared light by water, it absorbs the infrared light very strongly. So you need a very, very thin layer, much thinner than one of my hairs. So you need to have two transparent windows very, very close together and at very high temperature and very high pressure. And so this is one of the cells that Yuri built. And he built this and gave it to us in Nottingham. So it consists of a heated cell here and a tube to put in the water under high pressure. The light goes in here and then it comes out through a hole at this end. You can see if I turn it, you can see. So I can shine the light. So you're seeing the light going through the cell. But what's miraculous about the cell is that when it's at high temperature, 500 degrees, and a pressure of 1,500 atmospheres, that's extraordinarily harsh conditions, you can move one window relative to the other. And you can do this by turning a screw here, which moves this arm backwards and forwards. And because the pressure is so high, if you used ordinary metal here, it would just bend because you're pushing so hard with the windows. But Yuri used a special Soviet alloy that was made before the fall of communism in 1991. It's no longer made, which is so strong that it can move without bending. This cell was used by generations of students in my lab who worked with Yuri. And what he did was he arrived in Nottingham and inspired my students became their scientific grandfather. They used to write to him when he'd gone back to Russia, telling him about their lives, sending him photos of their children when they got married. And he was a remarkable person because although he was Russian, he wrote the most beautiful English. His written English was much better than those of most of my English students, but he had great difficulty in speaking English. And so I usually used to speak, speak to him in Russian, and my students somehow managed to get along. But he represents a completely 
dying generation of scientists who were passionate about their science and who were fantastically good experimentalists. They could do experiments which nobody else could. They could design equipment which the younger scientists can only dream about. And so he was a fantastic example to my students and to scientists across the world. He had a terrific reputation. I visited his lab once in Chernogolovka. It was a lovely lab, very like a Russian lab. There was a table where you could sit down and have tea, which is not allowed in the UK, but is really good for stimulating discussions. And it was a real privilege to have known him. And it's a sad loss to Russian science and to science across the world that he's died.